The Feast of Christ the King was instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925 due to the increasing influence of a philosophy known as secularism, a philosophy that excludes God from public life and whose key tenant is to think and act as if God did not exist. It's easy to get frustrated and discouraged about this, isn't it? For our culture has embraced secularism, and the entirely predictable result is political discord, economic and social discord. Crime has increased and in some cities is rampant, and public morality and a disregard for the sanctity of life has truly fallen to new lows. But this feast proclaims to us and to the world that despite all this, Jesus Christ is Lord and the rightful ruler of all peoples, governments, leaders, and principalities. This feast reminds us that all authority in heaven and on earth was given by him and is subject to him. It calls us to an ever deeper commitment to God, to an ever deeper level of faith and hope in him as we look to the future. Equally important in that the readings today clearly tell us that this same all-powerful Lord loves us deeply and has given us a mission. In the second reading we read, He who loves us has freed us from our sins by his blood. He has made us into a kingdom of priests for his God and Father. Our mission, then, is to proclaim this good news to the world and let everyone know that our Lord is real and wants to have a personal relationship with them. Our mission is to invite them to join us in worshiping him in the church our Lord himself founded. But it's hard to do that if we've lost sight of just how blessed we are. If we don't take time to realize how wonderful the faith our Lord has entrusted to us really is. And as I was reflecting on this, I was filled with a deep sense of gratitude. Gratitude to be part of this wonderful church Christ himself established. Established not for his benefit, but for ours. And in the midst of this, I realized, almost as if the thought had never crystallized in my mind before, though I'm sure at some time it had at one point or another. You know what? I love being Catholic. We are so blessed. We have the sacraments which bring us untold graces that empower us to live out the faith we profess. And where else on earth can we find the Eucharist where we can see our Lord, touch him, taste him, and receive him into our very bodies? And in addition to our prayers for each other, we have the communion of the saints, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and all the saints cheering for us, interceding for us, literally praying us into heaven every moment of our lives. And you know, the, the reality we see here on earth, what we think of as real, that is the material world, we think this is as real as it gets but the saints in heaven know better. Every good thing on earth, however good it is, is but a shadow of the real reality of the thing in heaven. As deep and as real as a parent's love for their child is, as real as the love is that they have for their spouse, that is but a faint reflection of the love we will experience in heaven a faint image of what our capacity to love will be in heaven. And the sacramentals, what a rich heritage they are. 
the statues, the smells, the bells, scapulars, holy water, the rosary, holy cards, holy relics, the sign of the cross. They fill our day and our mind with constant reminders of who we are and how every minute of the day can be consecrated to God. And then there is the faith itself the teachings of the church, the doctrines, the moral truths God has revealed to us through his church. This is the one thing that first convinced me almost 40 years ago that I had found the church our Lord himself established. Or should I say the church found me? The continuity of our faith is astounding. What we believe today, the apostles believed. The Mass we celebrate is the same Mass. The Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Read St. Cyril of Jerusalem, who wrote in the 4th century a description of the Mass that is strikingly similar to what we still do today. What other church has refused to compromise on abortion? contraception, and the dignity of the human person, life, and marriage? What other church defends the fundamental rights of religious freedom and the authority of the church to speak to all the moral issues of the day? Who has championed the cause of social justice and the care of the poor and oppressed more? I could go on and on. But I'll close by encouraging you to be grateful to God for the rich heritage and faith we have been entrusted with. The Eucharist, the saints, Our Lady, and so many other precious treasures. And why have we been entrusted with this? That we may know and love our Lord Jesus. That we may serve him in this life and be happy with him in the next forever. But we must never treat this faith as a private possession, but as it truly is, a gift entrusted to us that we might give the same gift, that same holy faith to our neighbors and those who don't know our Lord, that we might love them as he loves us. We are on a mission. You know, the world will probably never thank you for being Catholic, for striving for holiness. In fact, the more faithful you are to Christ, his church, and our shared mission, the more the world will hate you and persecute you. Be a grateful, faithful, and holy Catholic anyway.